YouTube, what's going on? I'm Ryan, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be introducing to you version two of my Node Suite, which I used to make this workflow, which produced the clip you saw at the beginning of this segment. After I talk about version two, I'm gonna go over this, this workflow, of course, because it shows off some of the new features. There are hundreds of new features, dozens of new nodes. The whole suite has improved performance. Not only did I add all these features, but I also focused on improving the user experience. Workflows should be simpler. There should be less nodes, should be e a little bit easier to follow now. It takes full advantage of all the newest features in Comfy UI, like the tooltip system. So now if you need help with these nodes, you can just hover on something and it will give you the instructions on how to use the node. I've also integrated it more deeply with external node packs, notably Animate Diff Evolved, and advanced control nets. And you'll see that direct integration in action in this workflow here. Something you won't see in this workflow, but that is easily the most powerful upgrade I've made to this node suite is now all parameters of all flex nodes are all schedulable. I'm, I'm very, very excited. I've been working hard on this. I'm excited to share it with you. So, uh, we'll, uh, You'll, you'll see some of these new features in action in this workflow, but stay tuned because I'm going to release more videos showcasing even more functionality going forward. So if you're not already, subscribe. Uh, we're chilling and uh, the more the merrier. So without further ado, let's start at the beginning of this workflow here. This workflow looks like a lot, but we'll break it into pieces and it, it, it won't be so bad. So here we start by loading uh, an audio clip that we will use to drive our animation and then set up a bunch of variables. That's all this group is, is just, just variables. I'll go over a few that are notable, namely the features. And if, for those who are uninitiated in my nodes, these features are just data sources that we can use for reactivity. In this case, we're using audio, but you can use motion, time, depth, color, brightness, MIDI, proximity, area, uh, the list the list goes on, but we're going to do audio here because it's a lot of fun. So speaking of which, we've got our audio. We're going to separate it into its component parts so we can really so we can isolate the drums. I didn't actually use bass here, so I just used the drums. So we've got the drum audio and then really I just used the kick. So I'm using this custom or this uh, preset filter to isolate the kick drum and then we're extracting this audio feature. Uh, from that uh, audio, th that filtered audio. This is what it looks like. You can see it did a pretty good job of isolating the kick. I also manipulated it a little bit here um, with the feature threshold. So anything below that, you know, that snuck through the audio filter, we can we can further filter it with this feature mixer. So that's one of the main dri drivers of this animation. The other is this time feature, and the the time feature is just we're using the pulse extraction method which b basically is just a sine wave and then we're using the number of frames per bar to determine the frequency of that sine wave so you can imagine it it'll pulse with the beat of of the song essentially but with a different effect than than just the kick um so those are and then you know the other variables here are just width height batch count, all that, all that jazz. So now that we have our variables set up, let's go on to the particle systems. Um, and this will act as our input video. So we're kind of doing a video to video workflow here, but we're making our own video right inside of, uh, inside of Comfy UI, driven by both the kick feature and that time feature. So we've got our particle emission mask. This is like the particle simulator. It occurs in this node and uh, we're just using an empty mask here um we've got one particle emitter um that that's positioned at the left hand side of the of the uh area of the mask area and then we're modulating the speed of the individual particles and we're modulating the particle emitter itself namely the yeah the target emission rate so that's that's how we can get the particles to only come out, to only be fired with the kick, and then also make them sort of jiggle to, to the music. So here. 
That's how we get that effect. All right. And then, so uh, this I've done manually here um, because this node, uh, I set the frame count manually so I could actually see it here. But what I've done is take the kick feature and I wanted the particles to like ramp up towards the end of the video, as you saw. So I've drawn this manual feature and this this new node here, this manual feature draw is OP. It's so, so fun to play with. Um, and I'm taking the kick feature and I'm combining it with this manual feature, taking the maximum of the two. So you can see that this is our kick feature. Oh, uh, I use this new feature peak detector node to really, really isolate the kick. And that's what it looks like here. Now I'm combining this isolated kick feature with this manual curve here using using the ease in interpolation method. So you can see what we get there. Pretty interesting stuff. And th that's what gives you this final effect uh, at, at the end of the animation where many particles are emitted uh, very quickly. There we go. Perfect timing. Next, we take the output from this particle em emitter and we create a depth map from it. So I'm using a blank, the blank image that we produced at the beginning of the workflow as the initial depth map. So nothing. And then we're adding depth to the particles. And uh, th that's what we get here. Using that, we're going to take advantage of this direct integration with the advanced control net node packed by none other than the powerful Kosinkadink. What we're doing is t again taking this time feature using this feature to latent keyframe and passing that into the control net. So what this is going to do essentially is change the strength of the control net according to the time feature. So that's how we can get this morph between straight particles driven by the depth map control net and then have it sort of morph into the waves like that is because we're we're reducing the strength of the control net and it's all in accordance to the to the music very cool very fun to do i should mention we're also taking advantage of another powerful thing that kosinkadink introduced here which is the hook system um so we're going to take this time feature again and convert it directly to a mask and that's what this looks like and then using that mask, we're going to oscillate between two different LoRa's. Um, we're, we're actually not between two different LoRa's, but between the bare model and this LoRa by uh, none other than Ralph Finger. The, I use his LoRa's all the time. So I've got another video on audio reactive, uh, specifically on audio reactive LoRa's. If you want to check that out, I guess I'll, I'll link it at the, uh, at the end of the video. We've got our animate diff set up and then our first sampler where uh, full full denoise here and then we upscale the output from this first sampler using a model um, I, you know you could use uh, neural network latent upscale here if you wanted uh, I think it's called NN latent upscale so in this case um, the image isn't too big so we can use it uh, then we encode it back into the latent space sample it one more time with a much lower denoise because we don't want to lose everything we just created from the first sampler. Um, <clears throat> and that gives us this output here. Finally, showing off yet more new features here, we can, I fully post processed this in Comfy UI. So you'll see here, and this is the bane of my existence. It has been editing Ryan here. The music was too loud, but what he's saying is that Animate Diff adds this sort of fog in uh, in the background, and it's really annoying to him. Back to the other guy. I don't I don't like it. So I've devised a way to get rid of that uh, using this advanced luminance mask. So it'll make a mask based on the brightness, specifically of an image. Um, so we're going to use that to uh, and composite it with an empty image. That, that same empty image from the beginning. And so we're going to cut all the bright stuff out, the brightest stuff out of our out output and paste it onto a black image. Um, so it gives you 
us a much, much cleaner looking output. But before we do that, I'm actually going to add some bloom here um, just to really enhance the uh, the uh, the final product. Um, and then uh, another final upscale here. Th this is going to push it on, you know, this final upscale is going to push your machine. So I'm doing I'm using a 4090 right now, but use caution. Uh, I was surprised actually that this didn't crash um, this 4090. Editing Ryan here. I'm about to close out this video, but before I do, I, ca I continued messing around and wanted to show you that I'm using a flex feature to control the amount of motion that is produced by Animate Diff, and it gives you a sort of distinct effect that's especially apparent right at the intro of the video, which I think is coming up right now. Okay. Kind of kind of works pretty well. That'll do it for this workflow. I'm excited to show you more of the new features um, in future videos, like the fact that all parameters of all nodes are now all schedulable. So the amount you can do with just a single one of these nodes is truly insane, and it's been a lot of fun to, to work on and to test. Do you have any uh, feedback? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear it. Give me a like on the video, whatever, whatever, star on GitHub, whatever, whatever. I'm still Ryan. Bye-bye.